Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home studio, which is just outside of Toronto by the lake. It is the end of June and I am so happy that summer is finally here. It is actually Sunday, June 23rd and it has been such a busy, busy month for us. It's usually busy when you have kids, I think. There's a lot going on in June, but this particular year seems to have really taken a toll on a lot of us. So my older son has finished school officially. He has one half day this week just to go in and check on his grades, and my youngest has four more days, so we're really, really excited. It has kept me on my toes, but I have been finding time to prepare for a shop update and do some knitting. So I'm really excited to share a bit of that with you today. If you are looking for me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Sandy by the Lakeside. I have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which is under the groups tab in Ravelry, and it is called by the Lakeside. And I also have a website where I sell my handmade project bags and leather goods, which is bythelakeside.com. To any of those who watched my last podcast and entered the giveaway, I had a big announcement for a 10,000 subscriber giveaway in my last episode, and I've closed it on Ravelry and I have picked a winner, so I'm really excited to share that with you a little bit later. And I think for now, I am just going to jump right in. I actually have a finished object, and if you do follow me on Instagram, you have seen it. I was very excited that I finished my Soldatna crop sweater, which is by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks. It's really, really pretty. I'm really happy with it. I was a little bit worried that it would be small. I haven't blocked it yet, or as you can see, woven in the ends, I just haven't had a chance. And because it's not one that I would see myself wearing regularly, although I love it and it's super cute, um, I just wasn't in a rush to block it and finish it up. I had a few things that I've been preoccupied with, but I think it turned out beautifully. I think I can um, block it out just a teensy bit bigger, but I've tried it on and it fits really well and I think it's really cute, super cute. It's, um, it's meant to be a cropped sweater. I did, I think I added one and a half repeats down here um, just to make it a teensy bit longer for me because I'm not that petite and I thought it would look nicer that way, but I love it. It's really, really pretty. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to wear it yet, but I'm thinking with a cute pair of jeans and a long top underneath. This is with the Chelsea Lux yarns, four skeins of DK weight. I don't have them with me, but um, let's see if I can remember. Hmm, this is going to be tough. Well, I know that this is pink peony. This is, I believe, eucalyptus, the darker green. And the mini Mobius is the lighter green in here. And I've just forgotten what this beautiful golden color is. I can't remember, but if I do remember, I will put it on the screen for you. But I, I love it. It's really fun. It was really enjoyable. Um, you're only ever working two colors at one time, so it's not hard to manage your yarn. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a really fun project. So if you do like color work, and you've been thinking about it, I would recommend knitting this because I had a lot of fun knitting it. And it's kind of a quick knit because it's short sleeves and cropped and you're always changing colors to get to the next section. So I thought it was a lot of fun. And the only other knitting that I'm going to be talking about today is a whip. I've got it in my town bag by Fringe Supply, or. French Supply Company and I cast on one of my sweaters from my Make 9 basket. It is The Weekender by Andrea Maury, which I'm sure lots of you have seen. It is a beautiful simple shape sweater and 
I've been on a roll with this one. So this is really all I've been knitting on and I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a bottom up sweater. I did not do the cast on that she recommended in the pattern. I think, was it a tubular cast on? I can't remember, but whatever, or was it provisional? I can't remember. But the day that I started this, I had so much going on and I was just so anxious to get it on the needles that I didn't bother and I think it's fine. Um, if, I, if I was to make another one, I would probably, um, I would probably do the cast on that she recommended. And this is a sweater where um, the inside is actually going to be the outside. So that's kind of fun. I like stopping and looking at the inside, which is actually going to be the outside. And I'm loving knitting with this yarn. This is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And the color is Snowbound. It's just a really soft, neutral gray. And there are little flecks in here. Um, you can see them a little bit better here. So this is really fun. I've heard a lot of good things about this project. People love wearing the sweater. They loved making it. And so far, I'm on board. Um, as for the size I chose, I can't remember which one I'm knitting, but I know that for me, I don't always do the recommended um, positive ease that is stated in patterns. And that's just because I know, I sort of know what size looks better on me or that I prefer. And for me, because I'm a little bit curvy, I don't want 10, 11, or 12 inches ease because I, I would look like I'm wearing a big potato sack. So I think the size that I chose um, had like four or five inches positive ease from my measurement. So that's how I chose. I double check my measurements to make sure I haven't changed. And I just look for the amount of ease that I know I want. And that's what I did. And I also didn't do a gauge swatch. But I just started knitting and once I got to a certain point, I checked my, my gauge on here and I was spot on, so I'm lucky that that is working out. I'm using the recommended needle size and it still might be a little bit loose, but I really like the fabric. And I think it's meant to be kind of a loose, casual looking sweater, so there it is. It's really beautiful. So that is the Weekender and that is pretty much all I have been knitting on. I haven't wanted to knit socks. I haven't really wanted to knit anything else but this. And I'm really hoping, because it's June 23rd, I'm really hoping that this will be a quick one. And I really want to cast on another sweater, which is not on my previous Make 9. I guess this is how it goes. I'm not surprised and I don't mind. I think I think it will probably change and I don't think my Make 9 will necessarily be just for 2019. Um, I don't think it would have, no matter what. I know that I change my mind and I add things. So I'm still sticking to it. I still have my basket back there with, oops, with all my projects and yarn in it. But I do have one more sweater that I am squeezing in and I'm really hoping to get the Weekender off the needles in the next two to three weeks. I might be able to do it, we'll see. And I have a new project that I want to cast on. I'm gonna call it my 9.5 of the Make 9. I'm sure you have seen it if you are on Instagram. Everyone is talking about it and making it. And it is called the ranunculus sweater. And I'm trying to think of who inspired me to do this. I think it was Meg from Wool and Cookies. She had mentioned it in her latest podcast, which was really good. And, and then I also saw Caitlin from the Caddy Jacks podcast, Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. And she was making a beautiful one. And I started looking it up seeing all the beautiful versions that were on Instagram. And then um, the really sweet Lindsay from Hello Stella posted a gorgeous picture of a ranunculus and she is doing a knit along. So I believe her knit along starts July 15th and only goes for one month. So I'm, I'm wondering if I can finish my weekender 
and cast this on for the July 15th knit along. I've got my yarn. It's really beautiful. I had a lot of fun picking this out. I think because I don't have a photo of the ranunculus, but it is a short sleeve. It could be cropped. I don't think I'm gonna make mine cropped, but it's just a really light and airy fingering weight short sleeve sweater that's knit, I think, on a larger size needle. I didn't even check, but so it's got a really loose gauge and some lace up at the neck. So you don't need a lot of yarn. And I had so much fun trying to pick out my color online. I love doing that. I know some people say it's really hard and it is, but it's just one of those things that I love doing. I look up pictures on Instagram to see if I can find the colors. Then I look at the website and I, I just cross my fingers. And I don't think I've ever been really disappointed with something I've chosen from photos. So this is the color that I've decided to do. It is gorgeous. It is Chelsea Lux Singles. It's a 100% superwash merino in the color, now I don't know if I'm saying this right, Axon Provence. It's this beautiful soft lavender, which is one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to be pairing it with this stunning mohair which is the color Boardwalk Blend. So I'm, I'm so excited about this. Luckily, I'm so excited about my Weekender that I am not casting this on until that one is done. But this color is beautiful and I think it will make the perfect late summer sweater or even early fall. So this is my dream knitting. It's working my way into my Make Nine. So that is really exciting. And that is it for my knitting. I do have something that I sewed a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to share with you. I think I shared the pattern when I got it in my um, kind of acquisition section. It's the Wixton Shift. It's called the Women's Shift Dress and Top Sewing Pattern. And I made the top, which is right here. I had other fabric set aside for it, but I ended up finding something else that I wanted and I need it. So I really love it. It's, um, it's done in a linen blend from the workroom. I believe it's, um, I believe it's a Robert Kaufman Essex linen and I got mine at the workroom, which is a beautiful store in Toronto. And it's just a super simple, easy, easy pattern. Honestly, if you are new to sewing, I really think this is a good one to start with. You don't really have to worry about easing in a sleeve or any buttons, anything too complicated. Um, it's a really simple and quick pattern. I think the most time was really just copying the pattern out. Everything else was super fast. So fits really nicely, I love it. I do have a picture on Instagram wearing it. It's just really easy and beautiful. And I think I'm going to make more of these in the future. It's so pretty. I have more of a pinkish toned um, linen there too that I'm probably gonna make another one in. Or maybe I'll make the dress, I'm not sure. So that's something else that I made. And I did have this fabric that I had posted I was going to make it in, but I actually think I'm going to be making this top with this fabric. This is a pattern from Amy at the Little Tailoress. She sent me this a really long time ago and I've been meaning to make it, but I don't make a lot of my clothes. I think because I was in the fashion industry for so long, when it's your job, it's not something you necessarily wanna spend your spare time doing. But because I haven't really been involved in apparel design for a really long time, I've kind of been wanting to do more of it. So I think I'm going to make, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make the one with the little cuff or just the simple one. Um, but this is a really beautiful pattern. It is the Emmeline T. And I think it'd be really pretty in this. You can either do it in a knit or a woven. And I have had this for a really long time. And I think I got this at the workroom years and years ago. It's really lightweight and I think it would make a gorgeous summer tea. So that is 
um, some dream sewing that I have. And I think, I think as June has been winding down and like I've said, I think in the last episode and at the beginning of this one, there's just been so much going on. And um, I think I've just been really trying to slow things down. And sewing is one of those kind of therapeutic things for me. So I have more sewing dreams too. I have this gorgeous fat quarter set that I got a couple of years ago at the workroom. It is the Rotary Club pattern collection from Kimberly Kite from Cotton and Steel. It's really, really pretty, and I just loved these like corals with the navy, the little birds. There's some florals in here in this poppy kind of red. It's really sweet. And I made a lap quilt with some Halloween fabrics a couple of years ago, and I just loved it. And so I think I'm going to make this a summer priority to just start cutting some blocks and make a really, really simple quilt. I really don't want to do a fussy one. I really like squares, triangles, or like the framework. Really, really easy. And I think this will make a really nice color combination. I actually have another fat quarter set that if all goes well, I will hopefully have two by the end of the year. But for now, I'm going to start with this one. I think the colors are just beautiful. So that is a bit of my sewing um, aspirations for now. So I've also accumulated a few really beautiful things in the last few weeks. I thought I was not really going to be buying anything else after setting up my Make 9 basket, but things happened. The first one being this, and this was a complete impulse, but when you see it, you will understand. And I, darn it, I don't have a picture, but I saw this pop up on Instagram. It is from Barrett Wool Company, which is Susan B. Anderson's wool company. There it is. I have never ordered anything from her website or used her wool. And she posted this gorgeous picture of this pig, Oliver Pig Kit. If you haven't seen it, you should really go check out her Instagram. That came in the bag. It all it's a little kit and it came in this beautiful little bag and it has pretty much everything you need to make him it has the pink for him he has beautiful little jeans and a sweater and then also a cardigan you could order one that had buttons as well. I didn't, it was a little bit, um, or quite a bit more expensive. It even comes with the eyes, some yarn, I think, to do the details on his face. And what is this? Some cute little stitch markers, yes. So such a cute little package. I'm really excited about this. I don't normally knit toys, but when I saw him, I could not resist. We love stuffed animals in this house, or at least I do. My kids are getting old for that, but I love them. And I think he's just gonna live in my sewing room. And I'm in no rush. This might be a really nice winter project. Um, I think I'll really enjoy knitting a toy. So I really wanted to get that kit, and I'm really happy that I did, because I think they sold out quite quickly. They have since, been restock, restocked, but um, I'm really glad I picked it up when I could. Okay, I've picked up some other beautiful things. The first one is from my sweet friend Joanna at Stitching the High Notes. She makes these gorgeous bags, and you know, I don't know if she has a name for them, but they're for your cross stitch or embroidery projects. It has this window. So you can just put your project in there. And I love that. I think it's such, such a brilliant idea. And when I saw this fabric, I could not resist. I love this purple color. I love plants and greenery. And so I had to pick one up. It's got her beautiful little charm here, which I really love Joanna because when I was a kid, I played piano 
And I used to sign my name using that as the S. So cute. So thank you so much, Joanna, for making such beautiful things. I love it. And in it, I've just got, I'm, I'm actually not a big <laughs> embroiderer, but I do love it. And I have this one drop cloth sampler. I showed this on a really old podcast, I think. I had taken an online course with Creative Bug, and I believe it's with Rebecca Ringquist, who is an amazing embroidery artist. And she has this class and she sells these, I think in her Etsy shop, where it's just a sampler of all the different stitches you can see here. So I just wanted a place to keep it safe for the one day that I will finally get back to it. It fits in here really nicely. It's quite a big hoop. I wasn't sure if it would fit and I would have to downsize my hoop, but I didn't have to. So it's in there perfectly and um, Joanna makes beautiful project bags and her beautiful um, cases for your embroidery or cross stitch. So you should totally check out her shop. It's Stitching the High Notes and it's beautifully made. So I love it. I wanted to share that. So I had another moment when something popped up on Instagram and I immediately thought that was meant for me. I've had a few of those moments lately. I'm gonna have to reel it in, take a break, but for now I'm pretty happy with what I've purchased. So there was a gorgeous mini set on Tristan's Instagram account. She is Dragon Horde Yarn. There is her card and it is called the Outlander Collection. And when I saw these colors, I thought they were completely meant for me. I don't know if you can see all the beautiful, gorgeous colors. They're just amazing, amazing. So I had to have them and I have no idea what I'm using them for. I think they might make a gorgeous cowl in the winter. I'm not sure, but just look at that. I could not resist. These colors are so my thing. These purples, this beautiful gold, a little bit of green, blue, silver. They're beautiful. It is called the Outlander Collection. It is 10 20 gram minis, 87 yards each. So I think I can make something really beautiful with these. No regrets. Love them. Okay. I have been wanting to purchase a pink hazel bag for years. I usually miss out on the updates. I just forget about them. Or when I do find something, it's not the exact print that I wanted. But this time she had an update. And the one print that was my favorite was still in stock. So I got it. So it's from Pink Hazel. Got a sweet note in there. And I think this is, I think it's the large project bag or could it be the medium? I'm not sure, but this is it. It doesn't say what size it is, but I love it. It reminds me of sheets that I had when I was a little girl. It's beautiful, kind of 70s. 80s vibe. I don't know what it is, but I love it. And I thought it would make the perfect summer bag. It's really beautiful. It's made so well. There's a zipper pocket inside. Oh my gosh, there's a different fabric in the pocket than the lining. So her attention to detail is amazing. Her bag is beautiful. I would love one of the crossbody bags one day, but for now, I thought a beautiful large project bag or medium, whichever it is, um, would be perfect to house one of my projects in. So that was a bit of a treat. I'm really happy that I managed to grab one of those. So the last couple of things I got, I just picked them up today at the Knitting Loft, which is a gorgeous store in Toronto that I've spoken about before. I love it there. And I got to see Maria and Bruna and go for a little drive with my boys. So they had a pop-up shop for La Bien-Aimée on Friday night. 
and I wasn't able to go Friday night or Saturday, but they still had so much left. So I went today and I picked out two gorgeous skeins of Merino singles. It was really hard to pick because I have so many projects in my dream knitting right now, but I really wanted to take advantage while they had this in their store. And I've been dreaming about doing a brioche project soon, maybe this fall or winter. I thought these might be um, two really good contrasting colors to do that. They are loam and peach pom-pom. So that's really fun. Lots of fun colors and speckles in this one. So I'm really excited about that. While I was there, I also picked up something kind of practical that I've been wanting for a while. They have these stands and magnet boards. So it's just like a, a hard board that comes with a ruler and some magnets and you can put your pattern or chart on here and just put it on the stand. So I thought this would be really nice and compact for some summer knitting that I have, a chart to read and um, using my washi tape sometimes gets a little bit tedious in the summer when you're sitting outside and ripping the tape on and off and on and off. So I thought this would be really good to keep on the back patio table and keep track of my chart. So that is everything. I feel like I feel like I got a lot of stuff again. Um, so I'm going to have to take it easy for the rest of the summer, except I do know that Christina from Chelsea Yarns will be at the Knitting Loft in July for a pop-up shop, which I'm so excited about. That will be hard to um, resist her yarn in person because I'm sure there'll be a great selection there. And that same weekend, we are going to um, Emily's event, the Viola Yarns event in Mooresburg. So I'm sure there'll be lots of beautiful stuff there, but I'm gonna have to try to contain myself because I feel like I have um, got a great plan for my Make Nine and great projects to work on. And if I continue to keep buying stuff, I'm just gonna get out of control again and overwhelmed with projects. So I'm going to knit with what I have, try to stick to the plan. Now for a bit of shop news, I am going to have a shop update later this week on Thursday at 12 p.m. or noon Eastern Standard Time. If you're looking for information about my shop updates, I usually post the date and time when I know exactly what it is. I'll post it on the top of my website, which is bythelakeside.com. And I also post that information on my Instagram profile page. So if you go to Sandy by the Lakeside on Instagram and just look at my profile, you would usually see. If there's no date there, it means that I don't know yet. Um, I like to have all of my items ready to ship. I don't do pre-orders. And so sometimes it takes me a while to get that date firmed up and I get a lot of questions about when the next update is, but if you are really interested and wanna keep track, you can also sign up for a newsletter on my website. I'm going to be sending out a newsletter with pictures of what will be in the shop so that if you're really interested, you will be ready and know exactly what's gonna be there. So I'm excited about this update because I love to do some really fun summer prints at this time of year, and so I've basically done just some small project bags I've been showing these fabrics online on Instagram, but I thought I would share them with you because they're really pretty. I've got these butterflies with kind of like a newsprint in there, and I just thought the lining was just beautiful too. So we've got butterflies, the origami elephants, which is also really pretty, and they have a gingham lining. And then these really cute mice um, with like a bunting, a floral, and gingham. Love the purple zipper. There's a gingham lining in there too. And a lot of the mice on here are kind of cut off, but they're so sweet. Really sweet pattern. So I will have tote bags and lots of leather pieces and the leather scissor covers are still in the shop. And I'm also trying to finish a few of the patchwork pouch patchwork pouches, the little ones. And I know they're super popular and a lot of people ask me about them, but they're really time consuming. So there won't be that many of them. So I hope you won't be disappointed if you miss out, but I will continue to be working on more. I have plans to really um, 
try to squeeze in a few of those more often and start to build up a little bit more inventory so that I can, every time I do an update, I'll have at least a few of those to pop into the shop too. So I hope you will find something you like. And um, I think the last thing is to announce the winner of the giveaway. So I announced on the last episode that I was doing a 10,000 subscriber giveaway and you could just leave a comment. It could even just be hello. I didn't ask a question or anything, but I wanted to say thank you. A very warm, deep, heartfelt thank you to everyone who left a comment. I spent a lot of time reading the comments and um, I forgot to to like them as I was going through page after page and once I realized it, it was too late to go back because there were 841 entries. And um, even if you just said hello to enter or um, you know that you've been a long time watcher of the podcast or if you left me a really long message, I wanted to say thank you. There were so many comments in there that meant so much to me. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I don't know, they just, they felt very sincere and very loving and I felt like people that had been watching from the beginning or had maybe recently found the podcast left such amazing complimentary comments and I wanted to thank you so much. It means so much to me that um, you enjoy the podcast and I remember not even knowing if anyone would watch or if I would continue doing it, but I feel like it's become such a big part of what I do. And um, it's just so nice. I had a couple of hard weeks in June between school and doctor's appointments and all kinds of things going on. And I would just sit in bed at night and read your beautiful comments and it just brought a smile to me. So thank you so, so very much. Just to remind you what the giveaway was, it was this beautiful Fleece Artist National Parks yarn, a project bag by me, this gorgeous necklace from Bed of Roses. It's uh, the leather cord with uh, a beautiful selection of stitch markers and progress keepers that I love. Some scissors and a measuring tape in rose gold. I've got one of the leather scissor covers, a pin, and I'm also gonna put in some David's tea that I just picked up, some iced tea packets. And I went through, I read everyone's comment, and I used the random number generator on my phone to pick through number two to 841, and it selected number 375, who is SJH4 on Ravelry, and that is Sue from the US. I'm not sure where you are in the US, Sue, but thank you so much. Congratulations, you have won the prize. I am going to send you a message on Ravelry, and um, you can send me your address, and I will get that package out to you sometime next week. I wish I could send something to everyone, um, but for now, I hope that my thanks and um, my appreciation will be enough for now. And hopefully there will be more giveaways in the future because there are a lot of fun to do. So I think that wraps up everything. We are going to be full on summer mode in the next week or two. I'm really excited. I'm thinking about doing some summer vlogging. So I'm looking forward to that too. And I hope that you guys have some amazing summer plans that you're taking it easy and finding lots of time to make things or do whatever makes you happy. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.